that Guwahati is probably one of my favorite places in the world, along with my home city, New York City. But I'm very saddened today to be giving this final lecture because it means that I'll have to leave my second home, my home away from home, Guwahati, uh, for months and months before I'm able to return. And namaste. I'm very excited to be speaking to you all in the beautiful state of Assam. But what saddens me a little bit is that unfortunately, this will be my last lecture in India before departing for this trip. So I have been really excited for every single lecture especially the lectures in Guwahati, Assam, because the people there have always received me so well and so kindly. I've had the best experiences in India in Assam. Specifically, I've learned so many things and visited so many wonderful places. The Brahmaputra, so many temples and churches, so many wonderful schools. In fact, I even visited an army school and did so many army-related activities there. So it's safe to say that Guwahati is probably one of my favorite places in the world, along with my home city, New York City. But I'm very saddened today to be giving this final lecture because it means that I'll have to leave my second home, my home away from home, Guwahati, uh, for months and months before I'm able to return. But I want to address you all as well. This speech is not about me. I want to give you all recommendations because I think there's something critical happening through the Indian education system right now. See, there were so many examinations in the Indian education system that determined so many crucial things about your life. There is the law examination, that if you fail it six times, you'll be permanently locked out of law. So if you fail this exam with a 5% pass rate, only six times over, then you will have wasted 10 years of your life. Or some exams, if you fail them, you cannot get into the greatest colleges which drastically changes your life trajectory, and so on and so forth. There were so many exams that have brutal consequences. And as a result, there were so many parents that have brutal consequences for not shaping up to the expectations of these exams, which I think is very saddening. The reason why is that math and science especially is supposed to be something enjoyable, just like every other subject. But instead, mathematics and science is kind of turned and twisted into a very boring replica of its original self. That is, every second that you are meant to spend appreciating the beautiful concepts in math and science, you instead have to grind memorizing how to solve a specific kind of problem without a calculator or reference sheet that you probably won't see in later life anyway when you're working in the math or science fields. And you spend all of these hours and hours and days and days and weeks and weeks just preparing for these, when at the end of the day, if you spend even one minute trying to really enjoy math and science for what it is, then the person who spent that one minute studying instead of enjoying will get ahead of you in the final competition. That's what I really dislike about some of these exams. It is not just about the scores anymore. It's not just about the comprehension, but also about the ranks. It's no longer testing if you have enough comprehension for a specific position. It's testing if you have more comprehension than every other person competing against you. And sometimes it's not even about comprehension. It's just about plain luck. And so I want to discourage not that difficulty. The difficulty has to stay because there are so many positions that require extreme amounts of expertise and knowledge in math and science. The difficulty can stay and the scoring can stay. But in my opinion, the competitiveness really has to go because the competitiveness in both a student's life and a researcher's life totally sucks out any creativity and passion a student or researcher may have once had. A researcher cannot even publish great new results anymore because they are too busy publishing small results. They have to publish one new paper every month or so because if they don't, of course, the person who spent all of the time they did the person who spent all the time the other researchers spent enjoying math and specializing in a certain subject, publishing papers instead, like a minor zombie, will get ahead in the final race. So nowadays, the structure of the education and research system really encourages this mindless grinding in a way that I think inhibits and totally hampers the further progress in math and science. And so I really urge a change in the mindset of both the administration and the parents who judge their kids for not getting the total top rank on an exam that's excruciatingly hard to pass. 
Even in the US, while we focus so hard on scores, we don't care about how we rank compared to others. And so I think there doesn't need to be this Darwinism anymore. There should not be any survival of the fittest because I think that is very disturbing. There should just be one benchmark, and if you are able to reach it, you should be accepted, no matter you know, how many people reach that benchmark. And so you know, I think that the survival of the fittest has totally destroyed all of our scientific creativity. And it's not just in the student's life, but on, in every country in the world, this sickness has perpetrated academic life as well. Academia is now seen as kind of a monster. So many people get math degrees and then work in an industry job instead of making new contributions to math and science. Because in their own words, academia sucks the life out of a person. And of course, they're not wrong. So I really urge people to change this system so that people can enjoy maths and sciences again. So that researchers can actually contribute something big and something new to math and science. And who knows, if India is the first country to make this change, perhaps India will be the first country with that next mathematical genius. Thank you.